you've heard a lot of stuff today um, about um, stereotypes, um, specifically um, gender stereotypes, uh, that boys should be strong um, and girls should be skinny. This appears a lot. Um, but um, uh, when I was younger, I was told repeatedly that boys need to treat girls with respect. Um, these are both examples of sexism, but not of a lot of people. Not a lot of people connect the two. So I've learned as I've gotten older that sexism is bigger in two main ways. It's not just about boys and girls, and it's not just about respect. I'm Nicholas Willich, and I'm here to talk about sexism. So when I was younger, um, um, I learned about sexism, and um, it seemed like this mysterious, like monster. Um, but lately, I've been wanting to find out what it really means. Sexism and gender equality, um, not uh, in the large scale, but starting at home, in school, and around town. Um, because I thought if I, sh if I can show people how this works, then we can see how it connects in the big picture, and we as a society can do something about it. So, in uh, the first step, a small step in my quest to figure out um, sexism locally, I started to pay attention more when um, gender pops up in conversation. And now it happens more often than I thought. Um, the thing I noticed. Um, most often was that most was that uh, boys and girls will be pointed out, um, sometimes with different attentions than others, um, for doing something that their gender just doesn't do. Um, it happens so often that you might not rec you might not recognize it when it happens. If things pop up like, oh, if you were a boy, you could do this, or <laughs> girls do this. So, so this kind of advertising um, targeted towards certain genders, um, it's destructive in that it limits activity in that gender to um, just these norms. I mean, actually, um, it, uh, it, it actually seems to stem from that very type of gender conformity. But we see ads like this all the time, um, and the problem isn't in the ads, it's in ourselves. Um, ads reflect what's going on around us, so the problem is in what we're doing. The, the problem is something that most people think is harmless, the separation of the genders. Um, it seems kind of ridiculous when you think about it that they sell accessories telling which half the population should be using them. It's understandable when it's clothing, given that men generally have different body shapes than women do. But I don't think body shape is really the reason for women's jewelry versus men's jewelry. It all comes from the notion that passed on for generations that it's okay to treat women differently from men. All right, so in some of my surveying, all right, this is working. In some of my surveying, um, I asked the boys what they'd say if they were called a girl, and I asked the girls what they'd say if they were called a boy. Um, I got some mixed results, but there's a pretty high trend among the boys I asked. Mostly they said, well, I'm not one. Um, although one guy did this weird jumpy thing and said, oh, man. Like, oh. But overall, the guys were really mature about it, which kind of surprised me given teenagers. Um, so they were really mature about it. And one boy said something that interested me. He said, girls don't do the things I do. I asked him to clarify. And he explained, girls don't do basketball, which I thought was always specific. Um, and I pointed out that actually some girls do do basketball. Um, it, he looked at me like, and kind of gave up. But um, uh, it, brought me, it brought to my attention that these rationales for sexism um, conform and seem perfectly reasonable. But in each individual instance, they can easily be pointed out and shot down. Now, a feminist will cast himself with you and rephrase accordingly. But the trouble is we can't afford to let the issue rage on while we stand there pinpointing individual problems. So. Um, boys aren't the only ones that do this. Uh, when I asked girls the same question, I got some of the same, well, I'm not one, responses. But I also had answers like, boys don't shower, boys don't be competitive, boys don't care about anything. And if I was a boy, I wouldn't be like this. Um, yeah. So, uh, it's not that these responses are wrong all the time, it's the reason they're right some of the time. It's the subtle jump between some boys are to most boys are, and eventually boys in general are. Um, it's the patriarchal evidence that making these jumps are okay because we've been making them. Um, and so, sexism reminds me of a weed. So, like I said, if we, if we try to go around picking um, individual <coughs> problems with gender norms, um, it's kind of like trying to pluck all the leaves off a weed. Um, and we can't wait for it to mend itself because if anything, it's been getting exponentially worse. So, um, the way to get rid of a weed is to get it at its roots. So we need to change our attitudes towards gender and sex early on, so we don't have to deal with these problems later in life. If you pay attention when the, when the topic of conversation turns to regard gender, you'll notice that each move individually makes sense, and only seems mildly sexist, if at all. But as a whole, we're still reinforcing these norms, um, and repeating the same gender struggle we've been facing. So, it's kind of like how my brother and I are good at naming 80s songs. 
bear with me. Our parents had been playing them for us their entire life, and you know they allegedly lived there. Um, and it's not like something we'd ever put serious thought into. It's just always been that way. So when we got um, old enough and our brains took over, we started making ch uh, choices for ourselves um, musically. Um, we did spend a large amount of time on 80s songs. It just kind of subliminally, without even thinking about it. Um, the same way, when kids begin forming thoughts for themselves, they're largely based on the foundation um, that they already had in the way they were told to be, that they grew up with. So if we taught them to read a lot, then they're going to be readers when they grow up. And to some extent, they're going to uh, expect others to be readers as well. Um, so if we taught our kids to live up to some norm, however harmless it may be, then that's the way they're going to expect others to act. This happens when we teach our kids anything, but more often than not, parents do teach their kids things that align with the gender roles they grew up with. Society isn't what tells girls to be girls and boys to be boys. It's the decades and decades of ideas, um, identities, and stereotypes piling up on each other. Society has somewhat let go in that we're making a little bit of progress, but we're coasting on what's been done before us, and that's the big problem. Okay, sexism hurts. It hurts men, women, boys, and girls. It forces them into these little boxes and tells them who to be. Um, and the only way to stop it is to redefine who we are as a whole. We need to think about what it means to be a boy and what it means to be a girl, a man or a woman. What does it mean to be a girl or a boy? Um, we need to lower our standards and frankly, I mean, get rid of our standards. So when you're talking to your kids, uh, remember it's okay for them to be who they are. They don't have to live up to any standards, whether they're yours, society's, or anyone else's, but most importantly, theirs. Also, um, teaching your kids that they shouldn't have any standards for anyone else um, is, is really important because um, the next time you choose not to do something because someone else is going to criticize you, just remember, that someone is just someone. There are going to be hundreds or thousands of other someones in your life, but you are you. There's only one you, and of all the people in the world, you're the only one that can be that person. So if you're not being who you are, nobody else will. You have so much to contribute to the world that we can't afford for gender norms to weigh you down. For our youth to change the world, we need them to be who they are and do what they want regardless of gender. Okay, and um, one more thing. Uh, so, I, if you want to go further with gender equality, don't stay quiet about it. Um, it's an important issue and I think it's really important for you to um, talk about it with your friends, with your people. Um, I encourage you to get your friends and family, um, neighbors and classmates to stand up for what you know is right. Um, I've organized a series of protests um, if you're in town. The next one is on Saturday, um, June 20th um, at the Downtown Public Library. So it's a lot of fun. Um, so if you guys are into that sort of thing, it's a great way to get out there and stand up for what you believe in. Um, talk to me at the end of the day for more information. Um, and I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Yeah!